This is the Ask a Photographer podcast, answering your photography-related questions about general photography, workflow, editing, business, and marketing. To submit a question, go to beblino.com forward slash ask. Hello, and thank you for listening to this episode of the podcast. My name is Mike, and I'm from beblino.com. Today on the podcast, we're talking about bags, camera bags, and the question comes from Oliver. And Oliver says, my system consists of a Nikon D700 and three lenses, a flash, lots of memory cards, cab release, accessories, and batteries. I'm looking to add another camera body when I get the money and maybe a prime lens. I don't always take the whole kit with me. I currently do have a low pro backpack. It holds everything nicely, but it's very empty when I only take one camera and one lens. I've looked online and have come to the conclusion that no one bag is going to work for every occasion. What are your thoughts? Hey Oliver, thanks for your question. And uh, I have to agree with you there, mate. There is no camera bag that will suit every single occasion. Uh, I must have accumulated at least 10 bags over the years and each serves a different purpose. And I assure you it does. And I assure my wife every time I buy a new one, it does too. And just like a pair of shoes, there's no pair that suits every single occasion, but there is a pair of shoes for every occasion. <laughs> I just made that up. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, back to bags. So, um, yeah, so the thing is with choosing the, <laughs> your backpack, you know, it comes down to how much equipment you want to carry, obviously, right? So, but I think when people go out photographing, and I see this quite often with new photographers, is they take the whole kit and they don't necessarily use all of it or even other than just what's, what's in their hands. So I think... Thinking that way is probably a good way of um, um, going. Now, you say you've already got a backpack and it, and it holds your kit nicely. Well, you know, and if you, all you're worried that when you go out by yourself, so when you go out and you've just got one, one camera and one lens, then, you know, you may just need a smaller pouch or a smaller sling bag or even a bum bag or a small backpack that will hold that. And some accessories, um, and that's and that's what I, I would recommend. Now, if you're using a bag for storage, which I guess a lot of us would do, you know, put all your stuff away and then you know store it wherever, you know, then having a bag that accommodates everything in one in one location um, is also an option. So you can see why people have more than one bag. It's just you know you just your kit grows and you obviously need uh, more place to store your stuff. So. What, what I would start with is obviously what you're taking with you. And, and if you're saying, you know, you're taking one kit, sorry, one camera and one lens, I tend to use a bum bag. I've got a low pro, a low pro sideline shooter, it's called. I've had this for, uh, I think, close to 12 years. It was one of the first bags I purchased. It has several zips, one that opens up the whole thing from the top and I can go in. Also it has a, a few other pockets on the side. Um, it has one zip that it gives me quick access, but predominantly it's just like a bum bag, right? It's one big pocket with some mesh, mesh pockets on the outside and mesh pockets on the inside. Really, really cool. I have my uh, camera um, with a 50 or a 2470, um, no, no grip, just in there and it's, it fits quite nicely. And in fact, there's actually room for other stuff as well. You know, um, it could actually be a second lens if it's quite small or, you know, wallet, keys, phone that type of thing and it's quite comfortable to wear it's got it's hasn't got too much padding around the front which is fine by me um it's got actually a fair bit on the back so the, the part that goes onto your body it's really really good now i also do use things like uh pouches with my think tank um speed belt it looks a little bit geeky but um you know i use this when i do sports photography or if i'm out photographing uh, a family, and I just want to take one or two things. And I put one or two pouches, not too much, uh, but you know things like a little flash, um, or even a, a, another uh, another lens, um, or I just want to keep my keys and, and stuff in there instead of my pockets, and, and that that works quite well. It actually even works on a regular belt as well. Um, it's it's and you can buy these um, separately. These called the skin set. I'll put a link in the show notes for these bags I'm talking about, so you can have a look. The next next would be a sling bag. Now, this is what I tend to use when I go out, and I've got two lenses and a um, a camera. So far, 
the bu the bum bag is the only time that I've attached my camera to the lens, but predominantly I, I have them separated and it just makes a lower profile. That's all. It's no right or wrong. I know that there are some bags out there that allow you to put the bag, uh, sorry, the, the camera and lens together and, and insert it in there. And, and that's fine if that works for you. There are, I believe, Think, Think Tank and also a low pro make um, bags that just hold the camera and the lens, which is cool. And maybe a little bit of space for memory cards and, 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 and you know, some keys or whatever but they're they're very limited as to, as to what you can carry so i use a sling bag uh that um it looks like a mesh messenger bag it's it's made by think tank it's the lens changer 3 it is designed predominantly for a uh, lenses so the idea is to have your camera ready to go and you're using it but then you have three um three extra lenses that you can be changing out of i actually when i go out in the town I use this bag, um, as I mentioned, with two lenses and a camera body. And the camera body, when it doesn't have the grip on, fits nicely, because it actually fits a 24 to 70 with the uh, um, the lens reversed, and it's quite uh, quite high. It even comes with a rain cover. Um, it even has a pocket at the back that I can put, you know, notes, model releases, um, directions, that type of thing. And I use that quite often. It's, you know, I think it was 160 at the time. Not too expensive, but not too cheap either. Uh, for what it is, it's, I guess it's limited. <laughs> when you think about it, it's only meant to hold lenses. If you adapt the camera bag to your to your needs, um, it actually works quite well. If I couldn't get a camera body in there, I'd actually be stuffed and, and I probably would take something else or have to carry my camera with me. Um, as opposed to put in the bag so i'm very lucky that it does actually fit in there and, and that works quite well for me and it looks like a regular mess messenger bag which is great um, especially if i'm pub public transport and i don't want to look like a tourist um, the next would be backpacks now you can get smaller backpacks that would accommodate you know a camera and a couple of lenses but the problem is backpacks is they hold so much and i guess that's not really a problem when you think about it but if you have to lug it around it's you know from the car, sorry, from the house to the car, and then from the car to the location, if it's quite short distance, it's okay. But if you're, say, for instance, going on a photo walk and you want to walk around all day, you know, you catch public transport in and into the city or wherever you're going, and then you're walking around for the day and coming home, that bag on your back with all that weight can get quite tiresome. Low Pro and Think Tank make really good straps on their bags. Um, I really do like, and this is the brands that I do do use quite a lot. I interchange between the two because they're quality, they're good quality bags. They're made very well, and they have um, lifetime warranty on them. So that's geez, you can't go wrong with that, right? Back to the straps. So the straps, you should have good good padded straps, but also to have the padded waist strap as well. Um, I have a shape shifter backpack and that that fits two camera bodies and two lenses and a flash i believe yes and a flash just in the main compartment um, once i take everything out i can zip it up and i use that for if i'm um, doing event work and i can just slip that in the boot or i can just wear that and it comes down to like four inches flat it's awesome I, I you know there's a lot of bags that are just so well padded and that really unnecessary um, i know that kind of sounds weird because all the glass and, and, and fragile electronics but you know if you if your bag is so full of equipment once you drop it something's going to break regardless because all the weight so i found that if i'm careful with it and i don't drop it <laughs> it's it's all good you know this backpack the shapes shifter 2 has heaps of pockets it can even fit a laptop in there uh it also fits heaps of accessories in the front um it also has a few other pockets has a rain cover as well and it's you know, it was a couple hundred bucks, but, you know, serves a purpose. And that purpose is to carry two cameras and, and the associated lenses with me. Um, it always, and when I do the event work, I've got my laptop in there as well. So it's, I do sometimes take it with less equipment, but it's just overkill, as you've pointed out with your low pro bag. But, you know, it is a really well-made bag. Next would be a roller bag. And the roller bags, you know, I think once you get your your extra equipment and have a little roller bag and you want to take it places, right? I mean, with your current equipment, I would not recommend a, um, a roller bag for you unless you've got lighting equipment or, or lots of flashes and stuff that you, you know, other lenses that you want to carry with you. But 
Um, it would be definitely overkill. It probably would be a good storage solution. I have a roller bag. I've I've had it for must be um, I don't know eight eight years or so, and um, you know paid four hundred dollars for it. Um, it's it carries a whole heap. I find that uh, if it's a bit bumpy or gravel, I'm stuffed. I, I've got to carry it, and then that's where the problem happens. You can get roller bags that have straps from Think Tank, which are really smart. But once again, when you're um, loading it up with so much equipment, it defeats the purpose. You should be rolling it, right? So the the, 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 uh, the wheels are um, roller blade wheels, um, and you know they've, they've survived over the years. I've used, used it every weekend for the past eight years, so... They're really well made, uh, but that's the um, airport airport security version two, I believe it's called. I'll put put a link in the show notes, and that's you know that's uh, that's going to the extreme, and that's when you have um, a fair bit of equipment, and you know that the configuration of that is can be changed uh, along with a lot of the other backpacks too. You know you have the dividers that come with it, but this uh, roller bag had so many dividers that I've used it, used the dividers in other backpacks. Um, <laughs> there's, there's so many that come with it. And lastly, I don't know if you thought about this, Oliver, but making your own backpack. Here's the situation. You've got, if you buy if you buy more equipment, right, you, you need a bigger bag, right, because you say it fits your current situation nicely. But if you want to only go on a day trip, it's too big. How about you take some of the inserts out and use a day pack? I've done this a few times when I've done hiking. Take a day pack, put some of the padding from the camera bag, have the camera attached, or sorry, the lens attached. I've only just taken one lens, right? And use the dividers and then put my clothes on top. And that way, you know, it's it's one, it doesn't, it's not bulky. Um, it carries other things other than just um, my camera equipment. And it's cheap. I've already got the stuff there, right? So that would be my suggestion. I mean, if, if you're going to get a bigger equipment, sorry, more equipment, then obviously you need somewhere to store it. And maybe getting a bigger bag would be an ideal, or even getting a smaller bag to to cater for those trips that you only have minimal minimal amount of equipment, and have two bags and split it between the two when you go to store it. So that could be one option, and and that's probably a cheaper option too, because the bigger the bags you get, the more um, uh, costly they get. So. There you go, Oliver. I hope that helps you out. If you have a question that you'd like featured on the show, go to biblino.com forward slash ask to submit your question. I'd love to hear what you think of the show by going to iTunes or Stitcher and giving me a review and a rating. And don't forget to subscribe so you get notifications of new episodes. Thanks for listening. Until next time, get out and take more photos. Oh, look, it's a cat in front of a sunset.